All right, today's tutorial is looking at how to make a software switch. And it seems like it should be a very simple thing, but it has a couple layers to it. And so I wanted to show you that in software to just show how, what, the, what the sort of logical steps are that would make a switch. And basically we're creating an on-off switch, and then I'll show you how to make it a toggle switch. Initially, I'm going to use the processing programming environment, which again is essentially Java. And just because it's very clear what you have to do and it's a step-by-step -step sort of process. But then I'm going to go ahead and import that to Arduino. So first in processing, we use a keyboard key, something like that, as our on-off sort of physical switch. And then we can port that to Arduino. It's the same basic, um, basic uh, software, same basic structure. But then we can uh, hook that up to a physical switch. And then finally, I'll show you how to transfer that information to Super Collider to where you can maybe toggle on and off, whether it be samples or different um, digital signal processing processes, that sort of thing. Okay, let's start off. Um, let's just take it step by step uh, and create a basic switch. So the idea is, you know, if you push a button or, uh, you know, come close to a sensor or do something, uh, you you have an on message and then you have like an off message when you let go of it or you go come away from a sensor or release the, the switch or something like that, right? So let's just set this up in processing. We'll just make a void setup. Okay, and then we'll make a void draw. So in draw, just as a reminder, this is uh, running at a certain rate. So everything in draw runs. Uh, continuously at a frame rate. So in, in this case, probably about 60 frames a second. So everything that I put into draw will run 60 times a second, something like that. All right. So I want to create a switch within draw. What I'm going to, the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a Boolean switch. So uh, a Boolean can either be true or false. And it, so that's our switch. It's either on or off. And I'll call it SW1. Okay, and, and my initial state maybe will just be true. So my initial switch is on. And we can have in draw here, again, you know, it runs repeatedly at the frame rate, 60 times a second. We can say if, we can make an if statement, and this will be our essential switch. So if SW1 is true, then we take some kind of action. So it will just print. And we'll say on. And then... Um, yeah, so, so it's true and true. Remember, with the if statement, it's looking for a Boolean. And you can put a comparison in there. You can say if, you know, this integer is equal to 1. So if it's equal to 1, then it's true. If it's not equal to 1, then it's false. But when you use a Boolean, uh, you can just pop it straight in there. Okay, And to use the opposite, you use an exclamation point in front of it. And I think that applies across all the languages we're used today, Arduino and SuperCollider. So if SW1 is false, is uh, designated by this shorthand. Okay, but in this case, we wa want to see if it's true. So if it's true, and we run this, it should just print on, 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 and it does, 60 times a second. Because, in fact, switch SW1 starts its uh, journey as true. All right, now if we want to uh, put the opposite, we can have a, an action for, and just put comments in here so that it keeps the thing separate. Uh, if SW1 is not true, we'll print that the switch is off. Okay. So that's fine because it's on, but like if we started this as false instead, it would just be off all the time, right? Now, so part of the problem now is that it's just giving me these events on, 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 on. Now, if our switch, basically, we say we push something and we turn it on, and let's say it's used to trigger trigger a sample, for example, we don't want it just to be continuously 60 times a second triggering the sample going beep, 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 beep whatever the sample is. All right, that's a bit too much. So we only want one event to happen when we push a button or have an event. Uh, you know, some kind of uh, external control, and then we want to release it and either have a release event or leave that blank, something like that. Okay, so basically what we want now is we want to be able to have a gate. We want to sort of gate this so that once it plays this event, it closes this gate, right? So since this is already kind of a switch, if it's true, it's going to print this on, 
and then it's just going to turn itself off. SW1 equals false. Okay, so that means only one event happens. Is it true? Yes. Print, do make something happen, turn it off to false, and then it'll go through draw again. Now it's false, so it's not going to do this. Okay, uh, and we can have so, anyways, so let's turn that to true again. Let's run that. So it's off because, well, let's let's get rid of this. Let's comment that out for now. And you say just prints one on, and then it stops, right? Because it prints on, makes it false, it stops. Now we can just do the reverse here. You can uncomment that now. And we can do the reverse here and say if, oh, sorry, if SW1 is false, we're going to do something, and then we'll print, we'll make it true. And I'm sure you realize now that it's just going to be this now endless loop of alternating. It's going on, false, then it's yes, it's false, it's off, on, off, on, off, on, off. And we see that's true. It just does that. So here's where the sort of layer of gates and switches need to happen in so, sort of software. There's probably an easier way to do this, but uh, at least in this case, you'll see sort of all the, the steps that are involved. And maybe you can figure out a more elegant way to, to do this. Now, if we want now to simply uh, uh, um, have just one event and then on like in a release or something have an off event. So let's say it's a button. When we push it, we want one event. When we release it, we want another event or nothing to happen. Okay. Uh, we want discrete things happen with the push of our switch and the release of a switch. Then we need another layer of uh, gates here. So we need another Boolean here. And we'll call it gate one. And let's make that initial condition false. Okay. And then we'll just put another layer on top of these. So we'll say if gate one. So if gate one is true, then you can go ahead and do all this stuff. And for the off bit, we can say if gate one is false, you can do all this stuff. And of course, we need another exclamation point there. I'm going to use Command T to tidy everything up. So basically, this is saying if gate one is true and if switch one is true, print on turn switch one off. Okay, and then it's going to go here if gate one is false and if switch one is false to have an off event and uh, make it true. Okay, so you can again, you can only get one event. All right, so since gate one is false, what's going to happen? Well, it's false, yes, but switch one is true. So actually nothing is going to happen, right? Uh, at least initially. All right, and so that's where the trigger comes in. So let's create a, a keyboard trigger. I'm going to use the key pressed function. Okay, so if any key is pressed, we won't designate the key right now. But if any key is pressed, we'll just turn the gate on. So we'll say gate one equals true, right? And then uh, 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 in in opposition or uh, to push against that, we're going to have if the key is released. So if void k y released. If the key is released, then we're going to have gate one equals false. Okay, so so if we push a key, the gate one is going to be true, right? And then let's see what happens when gate one is true. If gate one is true and a switch one is true, which initially it is, then it's going to print on and it's going to turn that to false, right? Now, until we release the key, the gate one is still true, so it's not going to do this until I release. But this switch one is false, so it only runs one one event. But once I release the key here, gate one becomes false. So then this is okay. This statement is good. Yeah, gate one is false. This switch is false, and it'll print one off. Okay. So basically, this should now finally be what I'm looking for. So I'm pressing a button right now. It's on, and then I release it off. So if I hold the button now, on, and if I release it, off. On, off. 
if I just tap it on off, on off. So you get one discrete event per key press and key release, right? So in a lot of cases, this, this business over here, the release business, you might not have an event. Or actually, to be honest, a lot of, uh, a lot of things that we do with our key things or games and such are really done on the release. So maybe you'll have an event happen on the release and you just won't have anything happen on the, on the onset on the press. Okay. Okay. So that, that completes that part of it. We have a nice switch. Now let's look at how to make a toggling switch. So basically we'll have it stay on. And then if we press it again, we'll have it stay off for any number of increments. Okay. So let's just try the most simple. We'll just have it a one or two. So let's create another variable, but this time we need to make it an integer. So int, and we'll call it sw1inc as increment, okay? And we'll initially make that zero. Okay, so we have sw1inc. So basically what we want is for our event, it's gonna print on, we'll leave that there. But also as part of our event, we want it to increment our, our inc, our incremental incremental variable so we want to add one to sw1 inc so we're going to say sw1 inc equals itself plus one okay so every time we kick it on it's going to add one to itself and we won't have anything happen on its off except we'll just let it go off or like i said oftentimes it's really done on the release so let's do that let's go ahead and do it on the release so when we release the key, it's gonna add one to our increment, okay? And then, um, and uh, yeah, okay. So if you run that and add a key, it goes on, off. Oh, sorry, let's go ahead and print. Uh, instead of off, we'll print um, SW1 ink so we can see actually what's happening. Uh, sorry, no, you know what? We'll just do it after this because it's incrementing it, right? So we'll say print, print line, and we'll say uh, SW1, okay? So we can see what it looks like. So we run that. Every time I press the key, it's gonna be one. If I press the key, it's gonna be two, three, four, five, C, six, and see, it's doing it on the release, so it goes on, off, and then prints my increment, okay? So that's how you do that. So basically, if you just now, basically now we can have a sort of toggle situation going on. So basically we're gonna determine how many members, how many uh, number of items we want to toggle through, and then we're just gonna set that to, to some kind of integer, okay? So the way you do that is you use um, a Boolean, I'm sorry, a Boolean, uh, a modulo, right? Which gives you the remainder. So if I put these into parentheses, okay, it's still gonna just increment SW1 ink is gonna become zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. But if I modulo it to a, a number, say two, that means it's gonna basically take the remainder. So at zero, modulo two is zero. At one, modulo two is one. At two, modulo two is zero. At three, modulo two is one. 4 modulo 2 is 0, 5 modulo 2 is 1, you get the point. So basically it just keeps toggling between 0 and 1, 0 and 1, 0 and 1. And that's what this becomes, okay? So if we run that, and we hit, you can see it's 1, then 0, then 1, then 0, then 1, then 0, then 1, then 0. So it toggles back and forth. Now we can make that any number. We can make this say 4. So it's going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. So if it's modulo 1, 2, 3, Zero, one, two, three, zero. Okay. Now, uh, a handy way to maybe just handle this would just to make this um, we could make this a, a variable. So let's call that um, SW one uh, total, something like that. Okay. So we'll say integer SW one total. And let's, in this case, make it uh, a toggle of seven. So it's gonna go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Or how about a toggle of six? Because I think in my project, I have six things that I try to change between. So SW1 total will be six. Okay, so we run that. 
hit a key. It's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, oh, zero, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, right? Zero through five. Okay, so there you go. So that's how we do a toggling thing, all right? Um, great. Now, uh, what I'll do next is maybe just have um, um, transfer this code over to um, Arduino. So right now, basically, we have a very similar code to the kind that we'll use in Arduino, except instead of using this key pressed and key released key code uh, keyboard commands, we'll just use a physical switch. All right, so let's go ahead and do that next. Um, just bear with me. I'll transfer it over to Arduino. We'll kind of rebuild this code essentially, and we'll use one of the switch programs.